let's take a look at when we're done with Substance Painter, now what? How do we transfer this back to Maya? And this character actually has some complicated things going on, and I'm going to show you that with Maya. Um, but let's say you were working and you kind of forgot like where this file was. Um, maybe you saved a lot of different versions and you want the exact one. One thing we can do to make sure that we don't make a mistake is we can export directly out of Substance Painter. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to say Export Mesh. And I'm going to say Without Triangulation, and I'm going to say Export. And I'm going to put it on the desktop, and I'm going to call this T-Rex underscore Substance. Saving it as an OBJ, and click Save. Okay, great. Now I can go into Maya, and I, can, I just have a blank Maya scene. I'm just going to turn off my uh, poly count. There we go. And I'm going to go File, Import. And I can see T-Rex Substance, uh, let's see, where is it? T-Rex Substance OBJ, there it is. And on this, I want to make sure that this is set to OBJ. And now I can see, okay, T-Rex uh, Substance. And then I can scroll down here, and I want to make sure that this is set to single object. And you're not going to see this setting unless you have it set to OBJ. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit Import. And now here it is. And sometimes you might not even see it. So if I select this and press F, I can see that it was way above my grid. Okay, so it's a lot larger. So now I can take a look at this. So if I look at this, if I go to UV, UV Editor, I can see that this guy actually has 10 UDIM tiles. And usually, we put all of the stuff in this first quadrant here, but you can see that this guy's a little bit more uh, complex. And now, he came in as one mesh from Substance Painter, but if I go to this mesh, separate, now I can see that he's actually separated into his body, his teeth, um, etc. And if I open this up, I can see that all of the surfaces are here. Okay, now if I select these surfaces, if I select just this surface, this is just his body. If I go to um, UV, and if I go to the UV editor, I can see that, uh, I might have to click off and then I'll click it, I can see that that single mesh is still comprised of five different UDIM tiles. So I'm going to export out of Substance Painter. I'm going to show you how to put it on all of these because it's going to be, it seems like it's going to be kind of complicated, but it actually it's going to be really easy. So I'm going to go back to um, Substance Painter and I'm going to, in Substance Painter, I'm just going to create a folder on the desktop. So back in Substance Painter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now export the materials and textures. So to do that, I'm first going to go to the desktop and create a folder called T-Rex underscore materials. Okay, and then if I go to Substance Painter, I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. Now I'm going to say, well, where do I want this? And I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say I want it in T-Rex Materials. Select Folder. There we go. Output Template. This is important. I think by default it might be set to PBR Metallic Roughness. I want to scroll up to AI Standard, or Arnold AI Standard. I'm going into Maya, and, um, and that's going to be important. If I want to see the naming convention, if I go to Default Materials here, I can see that this is what it's going to name it. And the important thing is that at the end, it's going to go dot UDIM. And it's going to automatically put that in. So that dollar sign means that it's going to dynamically fill in the name of it. And if I hover over it, I can see it's dollar sign mesh, dollar sign texture set, underscore base color, dot dollar sign UDIM. So if I want to change any of that, um, and I wouldn't have to, I could just hit export, but I'm going to go to my output templates, and if I go to Arnold AI Standard, this is the naming convention, which in the beginning it's going to be like, well, if this mesh is called my T-Rex OBJ mesh, and then it's going to be the texture set, and it only has one texture set, so this is really kind of clunky. 
Um, I don't want any of that. I'm just going to delete all of this and call this T-Rex. And then it'll be kind of cleaner. It'll be called T-Rex underscore base color. And then T-Rex underscore metalness underscore roughness underscore normal. I'm just doing control V every time. OK, there we go. So that seems a lot uh, cleaner. And if I come back here and go here, uh, now I can see that those naming conventions are a lot cleaner. I can also see that it's, it is pushing out 10 UV tiles. Now here, emissive is not necessary. Height is not necessary. I'm going to get my displacement map from ZBrush. So I don't want it here. Um, I also don't have any metalness on this guy, so I'm going to turn that off. So I really only need these three maps. Now if I go back to global settings, I'm good to go here. So once again, going into T-Rex materials, Arnold AI standard, it's PNG, and the size of it um, is going to be right here. I can see that uh, the size is the texture set size, which is 4096 by 4096. Okay, good. Now I'm going to say export, and it's going to push out those maps. Um, and I can see that it's doing the base color, the normal, and the roughness for each texture set. And there's 10 texture sets, so that should be a total of 30 images that it's pushing out, or that it's exporting. And if I go in here, I'm just going to go ahead and find that file on the desktop, T-Rex materials, and I'm going to let that load. I can see here, um, here's what it all is. And if I look at this, this is what it looks like. So I've got 10 color images, 10 normal maps, and 10 roughness maps. So if I look, there we go. So 10 color, 10 normal, 10 roughness. Um, now comes the, you know, the question of, well, how do we put this onto Maya? And one thing I want to draw your attention to is the, um, the file name. The file name is .1001.1002, and that's what Substance Painter automatically put in. Okay, and it automatically put that in because the dot dollar sign UDIM, that means it's dynamically putting in the name of the UDIM, and these are the names of the UDIM. And it's putting that in because we chose a Arnold AI standard, okay? Uh, and that's just kind of how it does by default there. So now I can go back to Maya. And before I start doing anything here, I'm going to go File, Project Window. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this T-Rex um, Final Project. Okay. And I'm going to click Accept. Now I, that should create a folder on the desktop that I'm going to make sure that I know the location of that. Wait, what I'm, I typed in uh, T-Rex final project, but I noticed that I didn't put it in the right place. So I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to go to uh, T-Rex underscore final project. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to make sure that I click on this and put it onto the desktop. So I just clicked on desktop here. And now when I click select, it should be on the desktop. And now once again, I'm going to go look for it. And that's why I feel like I want to confirm all this. I'm going to click Accept, and it's going to create, and here it is. So here's my um, final project, T-Rex final project. Here's my T-Rex materials that I just exported. And I'm going to take all of these materials, and I'm going to copy. I'm going to right click and go to Copy. And then I'm going to put these into source images. OK, so now they're associated. I'm going to go to paste. Now they're associated correctly with my project. Excellent. Now uh, I'm just going to save this. I'm going to go File, Save, Scene, As. I always like to do that to make sure that, yes, it's in the T-Rex final projects, scenes. I'm going to call this T-Rex underscore 001. OK, great. Now I'm going to go ahead and open my attribute editor over on the side here, and I'm going to select this entire T-Rex. I'm going to right click, assign new material, Arnold shader, 
I'm going to click on AI standard surface. Okay, I'm going to call this T-Rex underscore material. And now I'm going to plug in my files into that. So for color, I'm going to click here. And I'm going to go to file. And then I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up base color. Now, I have 10 slots here. And I only have one slot right here. That's OK. I'm going to click on this first one and click open. When this loads, if I press 6, it's not going to be correct. OK? That's because it's this one texture kind of repeated all over this guy. OK? So the trick is right here, UV tiling mode. I'm going to set this to UDIM, Mari. And now you can see it's, it found 10 files. And it found it because of the naming convention, because of the 1001, 1002. That's why it found it. And I can hit Generate Preview, um, and I can see if, it, if it'll update. In, there it is. OK, so I want to make sure that I have 6 pressed. And now I can see that it's correct. Okay, it's, It doesn't look right totally because I still need to add my other maps, but um, we're on the right track. So I can click on back here, and I'm going to go, if I had metalness, I'd put that in. But I, I, since I don't, I'm going to jump down here to roughness. I'm going to go ahead and add that roughness. So I can click on the first one of roughness. And I'm going to go to color space. I'm going to set this to raw. Color balance, alpha's luminance. And I want to make sure that this UV tiling is set to UDIM, OK? And I can click on Generate Preview. And then I'm going to go back again. And I'm going to go down here to Geometry. Bump Mapping, File. I want to make sure that this is set to Tangent Space Normal. And I'm going to click on this one up here. Go select the Normal Map. Here's the Normal Map. And I have to, you can see that by default it's not correct. I'm going to set this to UDIM. I want to set this to RAW and Alpha's Luminance, and I'll click on Generate Preview. You don't have to click on Generate Preview, and it might not look right in the viewport. Uh, but there, you can see that now it is correct. I can see that it is all working. And now I'm going to render this thing out. So I'm going to just save this real quick. I'm going to go File, Save Scene As. I'm going to call this T-Rex underscore 002, just in case something happens um, at the rendering stage. And then I'm going to go to Arnold, Lights, Sky Dome Light. Okay. And um, by the way, if I want the exact same lighting that I have in here, if I go back to display settings, I can see that the environment map is panorama. So if I come down here and go to environment, which is this last icon here, I can see that there is panorama. I can right click and I can say export resource. And I'm going to say, hey, go into my T-Rex final project, source images, and I'm going to click, uh, click select folder. Now I should have a file that's called the panorama. So I should be able to go to color on my image plane, or my um, AI Sky Dome, and then go to File, and then I can come in here and select the panorama. OK, great. I'm actually going to leave that set to raw because it's an EXR 32-bit file. Now I'm going to click on this to make sure that I have everything in, in the shot. And I'm going to go ahead and render this out. So I'm going to click on this icon. will bring up my render view. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit render right here. And it's going to first convert all of the files to TX files. And then when it's done, it's going to produce a render. So I'll just kind of pause the video. OK, great. So it looks like we've got a pretty good render here. Um, if the normal map is reversed, and it looks like it might be here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, right click, go to Material Attributes, 
go down to geometry and under bump mapping I'm gonna click on this file and then I'm gonna click on back okay so I'm gonna click on this and I know that's kinda of weird and in this area here where we switch it to tangent space normals I'm gonna click on Arnold and I'm gonna swap out R and green okay the red and green channel now I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna render it out again okay great now I can see that it looks like the bump map is correct um, and I just saved the image and I can see that the old one it was denting in and now the new one it looks like it's correct so hopefully that was um, helpful transition from substance painter to Maya using UDIMS and I, obviously I could adjust the lighting and stuff here but uh, that that'll be for another time